Here's your wrestling news for November 23rd, 2020. And your headlines for today include, did Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre have one of the best matches this year? Why did Seth Rollins eliminate himself from WWE Survivor Series in such a weird manner? The Street Profits and Sasha Banks have great showings at WWE Survivor Series in both the respective matches. Lana won at WWE Survivor Series 2020, but is this the best way to do it? What happened during The Undertaker's final farewell at WWE Survivor Series? Was it underwhelming amidst all the hype? Kayla Braxton takes apparent dig at Donald Trump by saying SmackDown won a lot at Survivor Series. Brandy Rhodes reaches out to Lana after heartbreaking video. Sami Zayn targeted an apparent social media hacking before WWE Survivor Series. Vince McMahon was livid at Donald Trump for trying to show him up and more. We are kicking off with Survivor Series 2020 today as there were lots of ups and downs for the pay-per-view. With the show running nearly three and a half hours, WWE had plenty of time to fit things in, and here's a quick look at the best and worst of this year's Survivor Series. Best: Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre stole the show. As two of the most dominant stars of 2020, Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre had a lot to live up to last night, and they more than delivered. Arguably a match of the year candidate, both men gave an incredible performance, making us wonder if a rematch could one day main event WrestleMania. Not too long ago, Triple H compared Reigns and McIntyre to classic feuds like Rock and Austin or Flair and Hulk Hogan, and whilst neither superstar may have the same drawing power of those legends, they almost certainly had a match better than what those names would have accomplished in 2020. The Undertaker may have stepped away from the ring thanks to names like Reigns and McIntyre, but the Dead Man's Yard is clearly in good hands with stars and performances like these happening in the Thunderdome. Worst, Seth Rollins' departure from the Thunderdome. Survivor Series 2020 kicked off with the men's traditional 5-on-5 elimination match, and though Raw got the clean sweep, they didn't have to eliminate all five SmackDown superstars in the usual way. Instead, Seth Rollins chose to sacrifice himself, telling his blue brand cohorts it was for the greater good. And though we know Seth will be taking time off soon to become a father, this didn't make his elimination make any more sense. There were a million different ways Rollins could have been eliminated, some of which could have built a feud when he eventually returns to TV, but instead fans got a departure that can't be followed up on. Perhaps Rollins chose to eliminate himself because he's relatively new to SmackDown and doesn't have that brand loyalty, but even then, that's a loose explanation at best. Rollins' dud of an elimination is made even worse when you remember he called himself the captain of Team SmackDown, and we're once again wondering why Big E couldn't have been put on the team. Best: The Profits and Sasha prove why they're champions. The Street Profits vs. The New Day is a match fans have been clamoring for for a while, and what fans saw didn't disappoint. Simply put, the Profits needed to win this match, as the New Day are veterans with nothing left to prove, and in a rare instance of sensible booking, that's exactly what happened. With such a big win on pay-per-view, it goes to show just how much WWE believe in the Profits as a duo, as the two men will carry the flag of tag team wrestling for a long time. For Sasha Banks and Asuka, it's clear the two can't have a bad match even if they try, and though Asuka needed the win more than Banks, the Raw Women's Champion's loss didn't really hurt her in the long run. With Survivor Series out of the way, Asuka can refocus on being a dominant champion, and with Bianca Belair having an impressive showcase in the Women's Survivor Series match, hopefully it's just a matter of time before she ascends in the corporate ladder. Worst. Lana wins, but in the worst way. Going into the women's Survivor Series match, there were fewer stars more cemented as an underdog babyface than Lana, especially after her WWE Chronicle documented how her mental health has struggled thanks to fans. With this sense of bullying happening in the ring, with Nia Jax demanding Lana stand on the steel steps and not participate, it would have been sweet revenge for Lana to overcome the bully, get revenge on Jax, and bring this storyline to a logical conclusion. What we got instead was an awkward finish which saw Shayna Baszler be DQ'd whilst Bianca Belair and Jax were counted out, 
and though Lana being the sole survivor was the right decision, her celebration for winning a match she had no part in was highly illogical. If anything, having Lana celebrate for a match she had no part in is all the makings of a delusional heel, not the plucky babyface WWE wants her to be. It would have been much sweeter if Lana had been able to overcome the odds and prove that she had the wrestling skills that fans often say she lacks, but instead WWE again showed how not to book a babyface. Onto the news and WWE capped off Survivor Series with The Undertaker's final farewell, which saw the dead man appear in the Thunderdome. There was no shortage of names in attendance as Shane McMahon, Jeff Hardy, Big Show, Mick Foley, Kevin Nash, Ric Flair, Triple H, Booker T, Shawn Michaels, and Kane all came out, each one with their own entrance music. Michael Cole even made a reference to the Bone Street crew, which was represented in the Thunderdome by the Godwins, Savio Vega, and Rikishi, and there was a mention to BSK's Yokozuna, who died just over 20 years ago. Vince McMahon had plenty of kind words and was unsurprisingly choked up speaking about the phenom, and then the man himself made his entrance. Saying that his time has now come to fan chants of Thank You Taker, the dead man struck his iconic pose as a holographic Paul Bearer appeared before the dead man. It's worth noting that none of the wrestlers who came to the ring were given a chance to speak at all, as for some reason their presence was not appreciated. The dead man left with a celebration worthy of his 30 years in WWE, and with the man himself saying he considers himself retired, we here at Slat Rock would like to say goodbye and thank you to one of the greatest to ever step in the ring. More Survivor Series news next, and though Raw's men's team dominated their SmackDown counterparts with a clean sweep, that's not how Caleb Braxton sees things. After the pay-per-view opener which saw Raw beat SmackDown, Braxton took to Twitter to say that the blue brand, quote, won by a lot, seemingly a dig at President Donald Trump. Since the election earlier this month, Trump has posted countless all-caps tweets claiming he won over Joe Biden, despite the race being called in Biden's favor, who is expected to receive 306 of the necessary 270 electoral votes. A lot of people on Braxton's timeline noticed this joke, and we'll have to see if the blue brand demands a recount or takes this loss to the Supreme Court in the coming weeks. Speaking of Survivor Series, Lana had a big night as part of Team Raw, and fans got to see a new side of her on the WWE Network. Ahead of her WWE Chronicles special, WWE shared a two-minute clip which saw the ravishing Russian break down in tears as she shared how hard it's been for her this year. After the video went viral and she received support from Gal Kim, Jordan Grace, Renee Paquette, and others, Lana shared the video herself with a message of hope for her followers. She said, I just want people to know that struggle with depression and anxiety that you are not alone. Let's encourage one another to be kind to each other because our words are like swords. Lana has come far since her main roster debut as Rusev's manager in 2014, and she's not done proving herself, and thanks to a multi-year, multi-million dollar contract signed last year, fans haven't seen the last of her in the ring. One person who saw Lana's emotional video is Brandi Rhodes, and though they're in different companies, that didn't stop the AEW star from giving her support. On social media, the AEW CBO spoke about supporting others on social media, especially stars like Lana who has no shortage of detractors trying to take her down. She said, If you ever need anybody to hype you up and remind you how amazing you are and how much this social media doesn't matter, reach out to me at Lana WWE. I've got you. Rhodes wasn't the only big name to chime in as Renee Paquette highly recommended Lana's WWE Chronicle, whilst Gail Kim said that the superstar was being incredibly brave for letting people see her as vulnerable. Though some fans believe Lana is AEW bound so that she can join her husband, that won't be happening thanks to Lana's contract, but that didn't stop the AEW CBO from showing some kindness across company lines. Speaking of AEW, the show taped this week's episode of Dynamite last week, and according to a trusted source, the show will see a huge return. This is your official spoiler warning for this week's Dynamite, so if you don't want to be spoiled, we recommend skipping the next 30 seconds. According to Reddit user Space Force One, who's been accurate before, AEW Women's Champion Hikaru Shida will retain against Anna Jay, but her celebration will be cut short by the returning Abaddon. 
It wasn't noted what Abaddon does, but given she's been out of action since Tay Conti nailed her with an elbow in a match that wasn't aired, odds are she'll be very mad. Abaddon was hit in the throat so bad that she couldn't breathe and was taken to the hospital, and now she's reportedly back and very ticked off. Back to WWE now, and although Sami Zayn is known for being outspoken on social media, this week saw the Intercontinental Champion become the apparent victim of hackers. On Zayn's Instagram account, the champion supposedly posted two advertisements for discount Ray-Ban sunglasses, though the SmackDown superstar was able to see the funny side of this incident. On social media, Zayn joked that he wasn't actually hacked, and he instead just really loves promoting discounted Ray-Bans. Hopefully Zayn will be able to figure out how to make his account more secure, but until then, the reigning Intercontinental Champion isn't going to let this hacking of his account get to him. Now, we recently reported that WWE chose to settle a $39 million lawsuit rather than let it go to court, and now we know just how desperate the company was to avoid the courtroom. The entire lawsuit was around the Crown Jewel 2019 incident, where superstars were kept in Saudi Arabia for an additional 24 hours, as well as claims that the company reportedly withheld vital information to shareholders so executives could sell stock for huge money. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that $39 million is a huge amount for WWE to pay out of court, but noted that the company was, quote, scared shit at the prospect of the case going to court. Though WWE will sometimes settle a case with a small amount to get a situation out of the way quickly, that wasn't the case here, and the fact that WWE paid millions upon millions to avoid the courtroom shows just how worried they were. We are going political next, as before he entered the Oval Office, Donald Trump was shaving Vince McMahon bald at WrestleMania 23, and it turns out the angle upset the chairman of the board. When former WWE writer Court Bauer appeared on Talk is Jericho, he spoke about the Battle of the Billionaires that included a segment featuring Trump wearing a huge winter jacket that irked the chairman. Bauer noted that Vince felt like Trump was trying to show him up and claimed that the chairman believed the future president was stuffing his shoulder pads to look bigger. Trump's WrestleMania appearance continues to be remembered as gifs of it have been used during his political career and the president's friendship with the McMahon family certainly didn't diminish no matter how much he stuffed his shoulder pads. Back to AEW now, as Kenny Omega will challenge Jon Moxley for the AEW World Championship next week, but the cleaner has a handicap going into the match. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer brought up that he could tell Omega was injured for a while, as he called attention to the cupping marks that could be seen on Omega's shoulder. Omega himself appeared and confirmed that he has a torn labrum, but that he's been able to avoid surgery thanks to AEW's medical team and his trainer Bryce Reddy. He added, As long as I make sure that I see him two or three times a week, I can lift, I have full range of motion, I just need to make sure that I can look after it and I can avoid having that surgery. I can't afford having that time off. Omega added that if things do get worse, then surgery remains an option. But with a shot at the AEW World Championship waiting for him on December 2nd, the cleaner clearly wants to avoid going under the knife. And we're ending today with some trademark news as the WWE has some new names locked down. According to recent filings, WWE filed trademarks on November 17th for the names The Goddess, presumably for Alexa Bliss, The Queen, seemingly for Charlotte Flair, and Big Don. It's unclear who Big Don will be, but whatever the case may be, WWE are making sure that nobody outside the company is using these terms.